All right, Brady Moon with Go Hunt, and today I'm going to be walking through an awesome video. So, fall's here, which means late season hunts. And so, to celebrate late season hunts, we got to get ready for them. So, that's why today I'm diving into some of the uh, strategies or just like even just favorite layers that I use when e scouting for a late season mule deer hunt. And I'm actually sitting at a friend's house right now and thought, might as well drop a video out there about e-scouting. So, um, let's give a quick summary right now. So the main thing we're going to do is jump onto Go Hunt Maps, uh, specifically Go Hunt Maps on the web, and then instantly we want to dive into 3D. And so if you don't know how to get in 3D and Go Hunt Maps, you'll see there's just a little bar here on the lower right, 2D, 3D. Make sure you click that, just highlight that for you. Um, because 3D is the only way to e-scout. So again, like the video last time I did about the high country archery uh, e-scouting, this is just a hypothetical unit randomly picked out. So yeah, that's just a unit I picked out just to try out this little tutorial. So the biggest thing right now I like to do is uh, use, I think three or four layers. So obviously I use unit boundaries. I use government land, private land, um, species distribution, so like migration data, and then I guess I use terrain or elevation band, so pretty much five total layers. Obviously, I have roads and trails, so I guess we should say six layers. Those are the layers I really key on, but the main ones are um, migration data, government lands, and elevation. I stack all three of those on top of each other, and that's how I find some of my late season deer hunting spots. Obviously, like you've always heard me say before, mule deer hunting is an art and not a science. So there's not any telltale reason for, hey, you use these three things, you're going to find mule deer, but it's going to you know, give you a little better advantage to try to find those, find those deer. So I started off, jump into Colorado. Like I said, it'll turn the private land layer on. This just helps me too to locate the private land borders. And by that, I guess we can just turn on government land too and explain that a little bit more. All right, so now you see I have government land turned on. I just have transparency all the way. So this is what I'll do when I, just like on the uh, early archery e-scouting video, I just like turn this layer on and I'm gonna kind of like just navigate through this unit. Probably should turn the unit boundary on first. So all I'm trying to do right now is get like a, you know, a general picture of how this mountain range looks. Oh, all these little different features of the unit. Is there any private land issues I need to worry about right now? That sort of thing. Kind of just, you know, you scan around it, try to look at it. I probably would go a lot deeper than this. You know, you probably start diving in really close, start moving the map around 3D, start kind of figuring out all these little intricate details. And we'll jump on this little example too. Remember I said earlier about benefits of looking at private land. So in late season the hunt, we're gonna have animals migrating out of the high country. So animals that you know might have summered way up here in the high country are now going to start moving downward. So up here you can see like this is 11,000 feet. Most likely there's not gonna be a whole lot of deer up there, especially if you were uh, hunting in November. So I guess I should start with saying that like this is late season e scouting. It's mainly for like those late October, you know, all the way through November. So we're gonna have deer up here migrating down and they're gonna get sucked on the private eventually just because of whatever protection, a lot of better quality feed, all sorts of number, different number of things, pressure from hunters. And so hunting these little areas that are near um, private land borders could actually be really beneficial because you're gonna have deer migrating down, deer wanting to hang out um, you know, on this private land during the day, maybe come back it up in the public. So again, I'll just highlight that so you guys can see what I was talking about. I was talking about like these little areas right through here. Like this could be very beneficial. And one little caveat I'll throw out there, if you're gonna be hunting these private land borders, um, you're gonna to wanna to take your cell phone, uh, go hunt maps, and while you're hunting near those little borders, make sure you turn on your tracks. This is a great way to just prove to someone if anyone ever comes over and questions you later on, like, hey, I saw you hunting this area, you know, what are you doing up there? You can be like, well, I was technically on public land the entire time. Here's the track to prove it. 
just some safety thing I like to do just because you never know who you're going to run into out there who might be upset and think they're on your private land when you're actually on the public land. So that's just what we're going to be looking at. And you can see here I've already marked a few a few waypoints in here. Um, but again, I'd just be like scrolling around this map, kind of checking out everything. We're just going to dive into this area over here that I kind of picked out. And so now I'm going to talk, tell you about the, uh, let me turn off this wilderness layer, about the stacking of different layers. Um, but first again, like I normally do, you can see I always mark every, everything when I'm out there hunting. Like I'll start a hunt with 50, 100, 200 plus waypoints. I want to know everything about this unit. And late season hunts to me is all about figuring out access points and figuring out glassing points and maybe areas of pressure due to roads. So right now, what I did earlier is I marked, um, okay, here's a road right here, here's the access. And then I mark all my turns for, for the roads I want to go up into. And I like to keep all of the all my uh, true access, like vehicle access, or even trails that I'm going to be hiking on. I like to mark those as white. And obviously mark the access symbol or the trail symbol. To me, just white stands out. And then I know that, hey, these are all, you know, roads or trail systems. Just so I'm looking at a map makes it easier to see all my color coding, how I do things. So you can see right here, for this example, I did some glassing spots as orange, and then just marked areas that I think look really bucky as a, just a black uh, buck waypoint. So like I said, marking those access points, mark this little access point, trying to get all the way up here. And then now what I'm really doing is just diving in 3D, adjusting that camera so I can get a big picture view you know, of how this terrain looks, how it lays out. And what I'm really looking for in some of these late season hunts too is little pockets of terrain that people are going to overlook. Like, you know, if someone was driving, you know, more of this main road going all the way up through here, you're going to be able to see all this terrain. Sure, they're probably stopping glass a lot of it. But, you know, there could be like these little hidden pockets, like a pocket like right here. Um, like an area like something like this could get missed by someone just driving up a road. Like, Someone's just driving up this road right here. They ain't going to see that from the road. A lot of people in the late season, you know, kind of get lazy and don't get out of their vehicle. And that's why a lot of times, you know, if, you have, if you're within a mile of a road, you're probably out by yourself in the late season. It's just a lot harder to get out, you know, snow, cold temperatures, that sort of thing. So just keep those little pockets in mind because the pockets to deer are a little like sanctuaries. Especially when you have pockets of timber. You have aspens where they meet oak brush, where they meet some darker timber. All that little edge habitat is where all the great nu nu nutrients are going to be. And so that's where the does are going to be. And most likely in the late season, that's also where the bucks are going to be. So you can see here I've marked like a general glassing point from a road. And like I said, late season hunts, as much as I hate it, you know, a lot of times you are you know hunting near road systems on your quad, uh, from a truck, that sort of thing, just covering country, glassing over lots of different areas. So I marked this area here. I really liked it because... As you can see here, I can see a ton of terrain from here. I can see, you know, I can see this giant basin up here. I can see this little area over here. Like I can see a lot from this spot, but diving deeper, this is where I started using some of these other tools, um, like these measurement tools. Like there's no way I can shoot from this distance. No way at all. It's super, super, you know, far away at 2,000 yards. That's why using this measurement tool sometimes is kind of great to say like, hey, is this a glassing spot I can shoot from? Where do I need to get closer? Or what about this train near me? Well, that's still 800 yards away. So all these little tools you can use um, to kind of help you figure out where to go in the late season. Right now though, I want to take you guys. So I want to show you kind of why I found this little spot right here. So I like this spot for a number of reasons. It's because it's the mountains are right there. Everything's kind of coming down off it. You got a bunch of good BLM land underneath it. So a lot of hunting area. But again, the three main layers, or I guess I said earlier, use five layers. But I love government lands for this late season. Species distribution, which is mainly migration data, and then the terrain tool. And the terrain tool is what I like to call elevation bands. So let's just turn on this so we can see the roads and trails easier. So right now you can see we have government land on. So once I have government land on, I'm going to stack on top of that uh, mule deer winter range. All right, this is what I told you before. You stack all these layers on top of each other, start getting the bigger picture of what you need to be looking at. 
For now, you can see here we have a ton of winter range in this area. Again, mule deer hunting is an art, not a science. You can't just look at this map and be like, okay, that's exactly where we're going to be at during the late season. You know, they still could be, you know, up higher. I've definitely proven that before where I hunt, you know, above 10,000 feet during November and I've killed some giant deer just because they had all nutritional requirements. So don't use this as an exact science, but it's going to give you a great idea of like, hey, once these cold temperature come and these does want to start migrating down, most likely the bucks are sort of following them. So they're potentially could be going towards some of these areas. And you have a bunch of resident deer that always hang out there too. So now I can see here, I got a lot of public land. And on top of that is a mix of, you know, this winter range data. Again, not an exact science, but it's going to give you a great leg up, especially if I've never been there before on late season hunts. You know, they're kind of hard to scout for besides for just driving around, looking at the terrain during the summer, looking at the road system. So I overlay that on top of each other. And then I can go one step further and overlay um, the terrain features. And so based on a bunch of, uh, you know, biology reports I've read, my experience in the field, that sort of thing, when I'm hunting some of these late season hunts, especially in a mountain range, obviously it differs from where you're at. Like if you're in Colorado or you're in a place in Wyoming, you know, these elevation bands will differ. But for this, this example, you know, I know that 7,000 to 8,500 range and the 8,500 to 10,000 foot range are great elevation bands to be considering for one of these later season hunts. It's like deer are going to be in this little transitional zone moving downward. So this is the area I want to hunt. And you can see, again, all these different layers are stacking up on top of each other in this area I'm looking at. So here, I'll highlight that for you again. So we got the elevation bands coming down through here, you know. These are the elevation bands coming down through here all the way down the bottom. We have the migration data going right through there. And then we have, this is just a crude highlight. We have tons of public land pretty much everywhere. Obviously there's a bunch of private through over through here, but so we have all this stuff coming together. It's a perfect storm, but again, Miller hunting is an art and not a science. You definitely got to get boots on the ground and try to try this, you know, out in the field. And then what's great too, you know, you, we can always obviously move, um, play around with some of this transparency. Maybe I just want to look at the terrain and, and now I just want to remove government land because I know all this stuff is, you know, public land in this area. So I can start diving in. I can kind of see some of these, where these elevation bands, you know, meet this migration data. Or maybe even I just want to get rid of some clicking things too fast as I'm going through here. Maybe I just want to look at some of these elevation bands. So you get a bigger picture of, hey, these are the potential areas that for this late season could be some things to consider. As you can see here, it's avoiding all this high country terrain. All this stuff that's not color coded right now is above 10,000 feet. So most likely areas that you probably want to avoid, again, you could check them out, but most likely you're going to get your truck buried or um, something crazy will happen. Trust me, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> thought I had to leave my truck once all the way until spring just because of how nasty it was. So yeah, basically you can see how I've used these layers to try to figure out a game plan before I even step foot in this unit. I've never been here before, but now I have a lot better you know, picture of what to look at. And again, we went through this kind of fast because I could sit here all day and talk about how I e-scout, but I'm just looking at these train features again, looking in, zooming in, trying to see what the train actually looks like. Can I identify asthma trees? Can I identify oak brush? As you can see here, I said, well, I got this kind of excited earlier. I started zooming in. I was starting to look at all this terrain in really high detail. And you can see, hey, there's a bunch of like, you know, most likely oak brush, maybe some asthma trees mixed in, but I... To me, this looks like a lot of oak brush through here. A lot of oak brush all over the place. This is stuff I try to key in on during these late season hunts. Like I said, oak brush meets dark timber, meets sagebrush. That's the area on that edge habitat. It's going to be where the better nutritional nutrition is going to be. And that's where the does are going to be. And that's where the bucks are going to be. So, like I said, I'm just kind of marking things, marking glass and points, marking access areas. I just want to have a giant game plan because I need to have backup plans. So I need several glassing areas in a mountain range to try to figure out exactly where I'm going to be hunting. Cause I could have a bunch of people come up here, booger this whole area up that might be considered hunting, but Hey, I got this area down here a little bit. 
And another thing to consider too in these later season hunts, you can see here I'm at like 9,000 feet. There's going to be a consideration on, hey, can you get your truck back in some of these places or do you need to take a quad or ATV? So that's why when I'm on, you know, 3D right now, I'm moving around, I'm noticing, okay, this is 9,600 feet. Could I actually drop my truck down through here? Could I actually drive back up through this little area at 9,600 feet in November? I don't know. Might want to consider bringing an ATV out there. And again, one of the other really cool features of, of uh, you know, Go Hunt Maps is collections. It's just a random collection that I created um, for this late season deer hunt. But so every little piece of content I have been adding while I've been e-scouting has automatically dropped in this collection because I have a new feature called, um, basically it's a pin collection. So everything you've entered while this little button is, is selected. Again here, I'll just highlight that guys for you. Ooh, I shouldn't have used white. There you go. Um, that little pin collection, when that is turned on, when you're doing e-scouting, or when you're out in the field on Go Hunt Maps and Mobile, and you pin a collection, all that new data automatically goes there. And what I like to always say too, collections are a way to have a plan. You have a plan, you're planning for success, you're staying more organized, and it's a great thing too, you can go ahead and share this collection with your buddies. So they're all on the same page. I can do a bunch of research right now for a late season hunt, share it with, you know, one of the guys at the office, one of my friends, my brother, my dad, um, that sort of thing. And we can all go hunting together and have all the same waypoints and information that I've e-scouted. So again, just it's just a way to keep me organized, keep everything turned on that I need to see and not see all the other junk that I might have from other states from all my e-scouting efforts. So this is just a way to, again, highlight areas on late season hunt and just then start diving in. Like I said, look at the terrain features, look at the vegetation, look at places you can glass, find those backup areas. Late season hunts are all about being able to stay mobile, be able to glass all the time and just find the does and find the bucks. Um, again, there's just a lot of different strategies in late season hunts, but once you dive in on 3d maps and start really looking at the terrain features, like not just like cruising through here saying, Oh yeah, this looks kind of good. But like really diving in and be like, Hey, does this pocket, it actually looks like it could hold some, you know, good vegetation on the edges. Can other hunters see it? Is it difficult to glass? If it's difficult to glass, where there's a barrier of entry to get to a glassing point, like some steep elevation or no trail, there's not going to be a lot of people there. There's going to be more deer there. And if it's going to be, you know, late season hunts, there's going to be some snow and it's a little further from the road. You're going to be set up for areas where, you know, you're going to have not a lot of people at all. So again, we'll just jump back over and show you some of these layers again. Just one last little time. So again, government land, have that layered down there. I like to overlay on top of that train features. And then again, on top of that, we go species distribution and I go winter range. Sometimes it's even nice to jump in and use this, uh, this highway crossing one. It's kind of interesting too to see like, hey, where deer are actually, you know, crossing highways basically. Uh, it's not something you want to sit there and hey, I'm going to hunt near the highway because of highway crossing, highway crossing sign. But it's going to give you an area where deer are kind of congregating, where they've actually had to take research data and figure out where deer are congregating to cross road systems. And you can kind of use that to your advantage and just go up the mountain range a little bit. But as you can see here, you know, having all this data overlaid on top of each other, and then you start playing around with the transparencies, start playing around with which layers on top first. You're going to get a, a good idea of how you're going to research this area. Again, public land, private land, um, elevation data, and then migration layers and roads and trails. Those are pretty much the layers I use all the time on late season hunts. And then just start diving into the details, start figuring out those access points, figuring out the glassing areas. So this is kind of exactly how I go about uh, e-scouting for a late season hunt. Obviously this process would be drawn out over several months. This process would be several hours long. I'd be on my phone doing it on real 3D on my mobile, um, using 3D on the web. All this data is going to instantly, you know, sync over to your mobile device. So you're ready to go hunting or you're ready to sit there when you're, you know, watching TV at night and bored. Um, if you're like me, I'm always on my phone researching, uh, especially on real 3D. So just use these tools to your advantage and just get the lay of the land before you go hunting and late season hunt, you'll be 
you'll put yourself in a place where it'll be a, a lot more successful because you'll have a plan. You'll know how to move in, in through the unit and on late season hunt, the more plans you got, the more successful you'll be. So hopefully all this stuff made sense. I know I kind of went through really quickly. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all, uh, be sure to drop them down in the comments below the video. I'd be happy to answer anything you got on there, especially how to navigate go hunt maps, how to use some of the tools we have. I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, so best of luck this fall and uh, hope you guys tag out on a giant mule deer buck. I'm getting excited. Uh, I'm looking outside right now at my friend's house and there's a bunch of snow-capped mountains. So we're getting ready to go hunting. So I'll sign off, but best of luck to you guys and see you next time.